Join me today as we take a look at another 28mm Russian tank from Warlog Games. The last video focused on how to paint your Russian armour without an airbrush. Today we will do the opposite. This tank was kindly sent to me by the fantastic team at Warlord Games to help promote their new Acton Panzer's War game. If you haven't checked this new game out, I'd highly recommend taking a look at the new range of miniatures as well as the game itself and all the other accessories that come with it. Let me know below how you found this tutorial and if you'll be using it in the future. Hello and welcome to yet another 28mm Soviet painting tutorial. Today we are going to look at how I paint my T3485 but this time I'm going to be using an airbrush. Now for those new to the channel you might be going what do you mean this time? My last video I showed you how I cheated and used a spray can instead of my airbrush because some people can't afford an airbrush or just don't want to use an airbrush which is fair enough. But today we're going to look at using an airbrush. In that previous video I also talked about how I used oils for washing and for blending panels etc. So this video is not going to go too in depth in terms of the oil side of things but we're going to look at airbrushing and other aspects of how I achieve my T3485. As you can see the KV1 was very dirty, today's vehicle is going to be a bit more fresh. Now, for those unfamiliar with these vehicles, you can find them at Wardlaw Games. They were kindly sent to me by that fantastic team there uh, as part of their Acton Panzers release. Acton Panzers is a new war game from Warlord Games, which focuses on tank warfare. Uh, it goes into a lot of detail where every person within that tank has a role to play. In that new release, you can find plenty of new storage as well as data cards, etc. Now, if you want to purchase anything on Warlord Games and want to help the channel out, I have a special link that you can use in the comments section. So to start off with, I'm going to prime my vehicle in black. Normally I would go a light grey, but today I'm going with black. Any spray paint will do if you want to cheat. You can use your airbrush, but I cheated here. And then I'm giving it a coat in olive green from Tamiya. You can see going very light with that coat as well. The airbrush in question is our Water Neo CN. So it's not the most expensive airbrush. So if you're new to airbrushing, this is a very good entry level airbrush that I'd highly recommend because you can get it for pretty cheap. Now I'm going to start a form of panel highlighting. So I'm using olive green and dark yellow too at a 3 to 1 ratio. Now the ratio really is up to you. How light you want to go will depend on how much dark yellow you put in and how much uh, you want those panels to pop. So to start off with I always go with like a 3 to 1 ratio and then I go to a 2 to 1. I start increasing the amount of yellow I'm putting in there and that's how you really are going to get these panels to pop without going from a really dark colour to a really bright colour. You're going to go somewhere in between and keep increasing that brightness. Now as I said I go to a 2 to 1 ratio and you can already see just with that initial coat that we've got a very subtle panel that's highlighted. Now I'm going to be increasing that panel's brightness or the center of the panel. I'm not doing the outer edges and this is where a lot of control comes into it with your airbrush and that's just about getting your right thinness to paint ratio as well as the correct PSI on your compressor. So for me, I normally operate at one bar, which is about 15 to 20 PSI, uh, as well as making sure my paint's properly thinned. Now, if you really want to be pedantic, you can go to a one-to-one -one ratio, and this is just doing a little uh, spray over the top of those areas that you've done a panel highlight on. My paint to thinners ratio is normally about 2 to 1 or 1 to 1 depending on what I'm trying to achieve. Once that's done I'm going to paint some I believe it's some sort of air recognition or some ground recognition markings that are very common on Russian vehicles and I'm using Tamiya XF2 which is white thinned with their acrylic thinners at about a 2 to 1 ratio so it's quite thinned down and now I'm just going to draw it on. The luxury of anything uh, when it comes to Russians for the most part is it was just very quickly slapped on so you don't have to worry about it being perfect. 
And then before you go on to the deco stage, you wanna make sure that you've given it a gloss coat or a semi-gloss coat in this case, as well as when you do your enamel wash or your oil wash, make sure you're protecting that paint. Once you put your white on, you should have something that looks similar to this. You can see it's very, very rushed. I've also tried to simulate like bits of paint running down. They're probably a bit too thick. I would have probably gone a bit thinner uh, in hindsight, but there you go. Now, these wheels need to have some German grey added onto them, just so you can see that there's some rubber there. Any sort of rubber colour will work nicely. Uh, to me, I do a rubber colour. Um, I think it is literally just called rubber. Uh, but, but really, German grey works really nicely for that as well. And just make sure you're getting everywhere. You can dirty these up, so if you miss a bit, it's really not a problem. And then for the tracks, I go with black. Very straightforward. <laughs> you can make tracks stand out really easily without having to go too crazy. And I'm going to show you how to do that in this video. If you've seen my previous one, you'll know my trip, my um, tips and tricks, I should say. Sorry, that's a bit of a tongue twister. But it's really as straightforward. You don't have to make it a really difficult job. Just very few amount of paints can get a really good look. Now I'm going with an oil wash of Engine Grease from Abtailong 502, thin down with odorless thinners from Abtailong 502 as well. You can also use white spirits. I recommend odorless thinners purely because it's odorless. Um, uh, if you want to see more detail of how I do oil washes and operate with oils, my previous video uh, can be found in the video description and that's probably going to be of a bit more help because i don't really want to focus on what i've already talked about like two weeks ago because you guys for those that are um, long time followers of the channel would have seen that video already so you can see that airbrush has really worked nicely for that panel highlighting because it's really making those panels pop now with the oil wash you can instead of removing the excess we're now blending that excess paint in that's a fantastic thing about oil washes a friend of mine said it's like cheating on facebook which it really is you just blend in the excess and it just makes that panel look just that little bit more worn also the great thing about soviet vehicles is you don't have to use the green that i told you you can use any green you want really because they were really dark or they were really bright or somewhere in the middle it really doesn't matter and then for the grills of like the vents and etc i use no oil so this t34 had a lot of vents so i'm just giving it a really heavy coat of that no oil um, acrylic wash works great for this they're gonna get soot and dirt and that in there anyway so if it doesn't look 100 percent clean i don't think it really matters purely because as i said they're gonna be heavily weathered you're not gonna have time to be doing too much cleaning of that particular area now for the tow cable i use german gray so this step could have been done when I was painting the wheels as well, but I always like to do my oil washes first or my uh, enamel washes first, just so we don't damage the acrylic paint that I'm putting on. And just take your time, a nice pointed brush here will do the job nicely. This is a Rosemary & Co. Kalinsky brush. I think it's a 2-0, no, zero brush that I'm using. I normally use a 2-0 for my fine work. Then for the exhaust, I'm using German camo black brown. So exhausts get very dark very quickly as well as rusty. So we'll simulate that in a little bit. And then for the light and any um, areas that the crew can look out of, there's like a window, we've got glass. I use Luftwaffe uniform blue. You can paint the glass however you want. I know a lot of people do different ways of painting glass, but just make sure that you give it a nice little bit of paint. As you can see, there's some some sort of um, areas where the crew can look out of on the top here. So that's what I'm just trying to show you. I'm just painting a little blue line across the top there. Now I grab the no oil again, but this time I make sure that it's thin down slightly so I use it um, with their technical medium and I thin it down just a touch 
but you can use it straight out of the bottle if you want. So now I'm going over the areas that we've just painted. So the details, so the towing cable, the machine gun, the lights, the lamp. If it had boxes, I'd be doing that as well. So you can see that I'm painting all of that or washing all of that, I should say, with this null oil. Now whilst that dries, I move to the track. So I go with Burnt Umber and I give it a really good dry brush. Now do not be afraid to get this on the rubber of the wheels as well as the actual hubs themselves or whatever the correct term is and just give it plenty. This Burnt Umber is a fantastic paint for giving you a really worn, dried mud sort of colour without very little effort. Make sure you've wiped a lot of the excess off on a bit of kitchen towel so it's a dry brush. You don't want any of that wet paint on there. And then you can do a very subtle dry brush of a silver colour. It doesn't have to be the same silver that I'm using here. And I'm talking just a very light little brush over the top. Just capture some very minute details as if there's a little bit of silver coming through of each of those tracks. Now the name of the game is, is going back over the base coat of all the details that we've painted. So I'm going back over the German grey. So that's the tow cables, machine gun. Um, uh, I think that's pretty much it to be honest. And then to highlight that I use German grey and basil grey at a one to one ratio. And you can see that I'm not actually painting a line. I'm doing little lines, little tiny lines. And that's to sort of simulate the the uh, the the way that the wire is wound or the tow cable is wound I believe so that's just going to give you that look now I'm going over the exhaust with German camo black brown just making sure that I capture the details that I need to stuff that's going to be hidden for the most part really isn't a concern of mine at this point and then I go German camo black brown plus orange brown at a one-to-one -one ratio so now we're really starting to try and get that color to brighten up and also give an element of sort of a rust color or hue to it now for the lights we go with Luftwaffe uniform blue and going back over them as well as the glass Now, about three quarters of it, I paint in Luftwaffe uniform blue with some white at a two to one ratio. So this is all about adding a bit of Luftwaffe uniform blue to your palette, as well as a bit of white to the next of it and just keep mixing it up and lighting, getting that blue a bit lighter. Um, and yeah, just keep reducing the amount of area that you're highlighting. So now I go to like a 50% and I'm at a one to one ratio. Then I go down to 25% and then I just leave it at that. Um, you might not like it. I think it looks quite cool, but it's up to you. Like I said, everyone's got their own little techniques when it comes to painting glass and windows and all lights, etc. Now to highlight the machine gun, I literally just put a little bit of base lead belt or some sort of silver and just give it a little dry brush. Now I am going to go ahead and weather this with a few streaks and a few little grimy areas. And I use that with the vehicle weathering set from Abtalong 502 as well as the thinners. But I'm not going to show you that process today. You can view my old video and you'll see exactly how I did that. Link to that is in the uh, end screen as well as in the description. But I am going to use the Tamiya <laughs> weathering master set. And that is going to really help us weather this vehicle without really having to do much at all. You can fire up the airbrush and weather it to give it a really dusty look, um, but that's for another time. That video can be for another time. This is just meant to be something that's quick and easy. Um, it's not gonna take too much of time at all because you wanna get on the table. You wanna play Acton Panzers as quickly as you can. So I use the sand color as well as the dried mud because I wanna give it the look of, it's going through maybe a summer field and it's got some dried sand or dirt mixed with other dirt obviously all dirt isn't just going to be the exact same color so that's what you're trying to simulate here you're not smearing it all over the top of the vehicle you're only going to put it on the sides where the track's going to be bringing it up um, or any areas that are going to be a hot spot for crew getting in and out of the vehicle 
Um, that's the sort of thing you've got to think about when you're weathering stuff. You don't just want to slap it all on all over the vehicle. It's just gonna, it might be realistic. It's just not gonna look good in this scale. Cool, now with that, I also like to give the tracks a little go. Do be aware that this is gonna destroy your little tool or brush or whatever you would call this um, pretty quickly. So you can get makeup applicators that um, you can use if you do destroy it. And then for the exhaust, I use a bit of soot. I do wipe away the majority of the powder on a bit of kitchen towel to make sure that it's not too heavy. As well as the vent areas, you can add a little bit on there, the barrel of the gun as well. But just be light, don't go too crazy. Remember, if you start off light and you need more, that's easier than if you go too heavy and then try to remove some. As I, as I always like to do, I always used to leave the track assembly loose so I can paint them and weather them as much as I want to without having to worry about disturbing the rest of the tank. So that's what I'm doing here. The very final thing I like to do is glue on the tracks. Or it's the, the second last thing I should say. Because the last thing you want to do now is give it a varnish of a flat clear coat. And that will get rid of the shine from the gloss varnish you would have done to protect the paintwork from the oil washes and all the other nasties that you have used to give yourself a weathered and really nice looking tank. And then there we go. That's what you want. So with that, that is the tutorial finished. How did you find it? Do you like the look of this T34? This is my second 28 millimeter tank. So obviously there's a bit of room for improvement, but I wanted it to be nice enough that you're gonna enjoy it, but also quick enough that you're, anyone can really go for it and paint it and get your vehicle on the table as quickly as possible. A huge thank you again goes out to the wonderful team at Warlord Games for sending me this sample and for continuing to, to support the channel. Another huge thank you goes to my Patreons and YouTube channel members. Your support really does mean the absolute world to me and none of this can be done without you guys. Let me know below as well what 28mm tank you would like to see next. Would you like me to go away from Soviet tanks and perhaps go on to something different? Just let me know. I'm very interested in into uh, seeing what you guys would like to see. Other than that guys, I'm going to leave it here and I will catch you at the next one.